in the shadow of the wealthiest city in the world, in a small corner of Los Angeles, only miles and light years from the celebrity mansions and beaches, a community fighting for its life. A place of hope, of sorrow, a place of prayer and welcome. Pico Aliso, the barrio in Boyle Heights, a sprawling community of immigrants. And Dolores Mission, the little church on the corner, making a giant leap of faith together with love. This is the story of how a people lost in America is found in faith, how nightmares are transformed into dreams and dreams into reality. Here, in the hearts, minds, and souls, in the prayers of a community that will not surrender to violence and despair, that will not put off the prospect of joy. We at this church are, the best word I have is a symbol. I think how we do become a sign is that in this city and in the world where there's little specks of light, where people come together and try to make a difference, then you become more than who you really are. For more than 50 years, Dolores Mission has watched over this neighborhood, a small parish in the Los Angeles Archdiocese with deep pockets of compassion for the outstretched hands of its people. Boyle Heights, Los Angeles, yesterday's land of immigrants, Jewish, Asian, European. And today, largely Mexican and Central American men, women, and children trying to build a home on the rough edges of the city. As always, it's a dangerous proposition. A half dozen gangs compete for the same territory in Boyle Heights. The area has one of the highest homicide rates in the city. Have units go over there and sit on it until we can get this thing sorted out and get a uh, positive ID with the victim. In the first six months of 2002, the death toll in the streets had already reached 30, an average of more than one homicide per week. I don't want nobody else to die. I think I've seen a lot of death. And if I, if I really do want to ha have my brother rest in peace, I think that's the best thing to do. To just keep the faith and just keep thinking and keep working towards peace. The impact of crime on families in the community has been devastating. Dolores Mission staff member Rita Chides has lost two brothers to violence on the street, a wound that only time and faith can begin to heal. This is a meditation um, written by Father Michael Kennedy the week of my brother passing away. Walking into the pain, don't turn away from the pain. Walk into it, look at it in the face, otherwise it will destroy you. Reaching the top of the steps, reaching the mother, her second son killed. Embracing pain, taking it in. Trying to transform it, otherwise we too will lie in darkness. There was a single gang shooting in October of 2000 that spurred the Dolores Mission community into action. That was the evening when 10-year-old Stephanie Ragoza was cut down by a stray bullet while riding her bike in front of her house on Clarence Street. Dolores Mission pastor Father Michael Kennedy remembers the night well. We had a retreat at Malibu and uh, it was for like 30 people from our parish and we got back around four and I went to the house, I dropped off some people and got a call that there had been a drive-by and two people had been killed. I asked, you know, what happened to uh, Stephanie, they said she's in the hospital. Um, so I went over to White Memorial, <clears throat> the family was gathered there. We. Uh, we went in and we blessed her body and prayed for her. We were all shocked. We were all, people felt like this was kind of a, the, uh, the, the last drop in the glass and it's just people just felt that it was, this time it was Stephanie, but it could have been their very own children. People that we never, you would never see ever in any activity, their faces, were, their bodies were there that day. They were crying, we were all crying. It was so 
it hit home. It hit home. Uh, people decided we can, we are not gonna take it. It's not like we can't. Take it. We are not gonna take it anymore. An empty desk. There is no one sitting at the desk. The chair is against the desk. Yesterday, Stephanie sat at this desk. She took out her pencil. She took out her notebook. She talked to Javier. They played at recess. I stared down at this desk. There is no one sitting there. It was empty. There were no books. The teacher had to clean out the desk. She cried so much she couldn't come back to school the next day. Stephanie, you are 10 years old. You are playing on your bike. Machine gun bullet hits you in the heart. It explodes. A thousand tears began to fall within. It was like a waterfall. My lungs were full of crying inside. What could I do to bring back Stephanie? What could I do? The community reacted, calling for an immediate response from City Hall. At the top of their list of demands, a promise from politicians and police to help stop gang violence. We want to improve the entire neighborhood so that everywhere in this neighborhood is a safe place for our children to walk, a safe place for our children to play. So tonight we're here to take the street and tell the city that we're ready to do our part. We want to ask the city if you're ready to do yours. Men, women, and children vowed to blockade the streets with their bodies until they got results. You see whole families bringing their, 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 their mattresses, their covers, their, all their children carrying their pillows and water and everything ready, I mean ready, to sleep on the street. We are moved by the strength of the Boyle Heights community. You have organized yourselves to call for change. You serve as an example of the power of a community united to better the lives of its residents. You have requested speed bumps to help you in your efforts. We have directed the Department of Transportation to install those speed bumps by Friday, October 20th. They got speed bumps and repaved roads, but they got something even more important. They got a sense of themselves. The neighborhood that people said didn't have a prayer had that and something more. Well, from that moment, we realized, we as organizers realized, well, there are some really key leaders over here. Uh, we, the organi professional organizer, or the priest cannot do it alone. We need to uh, train people. We need to provide some basic training skills so they themselves will run uh, the effort and it will not be us again running the show. Direction came from the church-based communities already established by Dolores Mission, small groups of residents putting their heads together and finding solutions. We want to protect our community, our children. I think for the future to be, to see the children play outside and it's no problem, it's no shootings, it's no gang members. Uh, and I think we, we can do that together. It's not only two or three people. They, everybody needs to be part of this, all this process. Leaders were trained by staff from Dolores Mission and by Proyecto Pastoral, a community organization working closely with the church. Just the, the progress and just the development of the women, it's just yeah. so, so, it's just so noticeable. Yes. I tell them, I was, I'm watching you and it's like, yes. you remember when you started where you are now? It's just beautiful to yes. see. As it turned out, most of those leaders were women, mothers tired of seeing their children endangered. They began gathering every Friday night in the church parking lot. There, 
where they took to the streets and the projects, singing, praying, and holding mass, making their presence felt during the walk for peace, the Kamenata. <laughs> 